Over the minds of mortal men come many shadows. Shadows of greed and hate, jealousy and fear. Shadows which fog the minds of men and women, which urge them on into their venture in the dark. The American Broadcasting Company presents Dark Venture, written by Larry Marcus, directed by William T. Johnson, and featuring Joan Banks in Elizabeth is Frightened. And now your host for tonight's journey into darkness... John Newland. This is John Newland. Tonight we search through the dark city for Elizabeth. The night is unbroken by stars or moon. There are only the thin, pitiful street lamps, the flashing headlights of an occasional speeding car. The hour is two. The chimes in the gray cathedral boom hollowly in the empty streets. An ambulance races down Main, its red warning light flashing on and off quickly, like the fevered... T- a newsboy stands on a street corner waiting for the last bus. A tall girl in a thin coat hides in the shadows of a cigar store, waiting for nothing at all. But we go on, for we must find Elizabeth down Ardmore Drive... Now the darkness deepens. Now it is a quiet, dignified darkness draping itself over these fine homes. And now here at last we have reached Elizabeth. This is Elizabeth, tossing and turning in her sleep, in the grip of some terrible dream that will not release her. By the faint moonlight filtering through the curtains, we watch her strange struggle. Her head twisting feverishly from side to side, her fingers clawing at some invisible enemy. And then suddenly the struggle becomes too much. No! No, no! It's only a dream. Everything all right. It's only a dream. You won't hurt me again. Go back to sleep. But I... I can't sleep. Remembering. It's always the same. I can't forget you, Philip. No matter how hard I try. I don't know who introduced me to the stranger in town, Philip Bailey. I suppose we were brought together because at 45 he was an eligible widower, and at 28 I was well on my way to being an ineligible old maid. But from the very first I was fascinated by him, by his strange mind. And he was so honest and kind, and I admired him for that. I remember how he spoke of his first wife, Martha. You would have liked Martha, Elizabeth. She was so wonderfully alive. The winter she took sick of pneumonia and died, I simply couldn't believe it. For weeks afterward, every time the doorbell rang, I thought, this will be Martha. I've been dreaming this terrible thing. I've only to throw open the door and she'll be standing there, smiling. A month after we met, Philip asked me to marry him, and I accepted at once. Everyone was happy for me. Everyone agreed it was a good match. Everyone but my housekeeper, Flora. When she heard I was to be married, she let me know how she felt in no uncertain way. I've known you since your mama brought you home in a pink blanket, and I can speak plain, Elizabeth. I think you're making a mistake. How can you say that, Flora? You hardly know Philip. I've got a feeling, that's all. Oh, Flora, a feeling. Well, what do you know about him, Elizabeth? What do you really know? I know that when I'm with him, I'm very, very happy. He knows that when he's with you, he's within grabbing distance of a lot of money. Oh, Philip was right. Hmm? He warned me that's what people would say, that he was marrying me for my money. Well, I want to show you something, Flora. I have a copy of it right here in my desk. Here. 
I want you to read this. Hmm? Hmm. Waiver of rights. I, Philip Bailey, do hereby relinquish all rights and claims to all real and personal property of Elizabeth Bronson for the duration of her natural life. Hmm. How do you like that, Flora? Well, on paper it looks all right. When we returned from our honeymoon, Philip took over the side room on the first floor for his study. He filled it with his books and sealed himself off from everyone for hours. Yet we still had time for dinners in the theater and house parties. One night in our home, Philip met Dr. Davis, who'd been our family physician for many years. And here was the first indication of what was to come. No, Doctor, I don't agree at all. I have found that the most exciting aspect of psychiatry is the brutal and terrifying manner in which one mind can dominate another. You mean hypnosis, Mr. Bailey? Hypnosis, I dislike that word. It smacks of the vaudeville stage. But to me, it's utterly fascinating how I can look into another man's eyes, thrust my will into his very soul, and force him to do my bidding. Of course, but only a quack would use hypnosis that way. A quack? I'll see you. Right, Bailey. Bailey. Heavens, it sounds like you two are about ready to start punching each other in the nose. I think I'll be going, Elizabeth. Well, doctor, you were to stay for dinner. Well, let the doctor go, Elizabeth. I don't think he'd enjoy his dinner anyhow. But everything really began two days later, in the early evening with the ringing of the telephone. I'll get it, Lizzie. Hello? Oh, hello, Helen. A bridge game tonight? Well, I'd like to, Helen, but uh, Elizabeth hasn't been feeling too well lately. I feel it. No, I guess it's just nerves, but she does need rest, you know. Could you excuse her just for tonight? Thanks, Helen, thank you. Goodbye. Philip, why in the world did you tell her I wasn't feeling well? I feel wonderful. Oh, I, I guess I'm just selfish. I don't want you to do any, go to any bridge game tonight, darling. I want you to stay home with me. <laughs> I see. Why else would I tell her that, darling? And will that be all, Mrs. Bailey? Mm, let me see. Razor blades, toothpaste, hand cream. Yes, I guess that's all, Mr. Martin. Okay. Oh, by the way, are those sleeping pills helping you any? Sleeping pills? Those pills your husband picked up for your nerves. My nerves? Yes. But I don't understand. I... Hmm? Never mind. Are you feeling better these days? Yes. Yes, I'm... Feeling much better. Well, of course I told the druggist they were for you, darling. I thought they'd be easier to get that way. Oh, then you really bought them for yourself? Yes, yes. I guess I've been doing too much reading lately. Just haven't been able to sleep so well. Philip, what did you mean, easier to get? It's only a mild sedative. Anyone can buy that medicine. Well, I just didn't want a lot of people gossiping about me. Why make such a big issue out of it, Elizabeth? Why else would I have told the druggist that? Is that you, Flora? Yes, it's me, all right. It's me. Did you get all the groceries for dinner tonight? Yes, I got everything. Oh, I want everything to be just right. It's quite a celebration, you know. Just six months ago today, I met Philip. Hmm. What's the matter, Flora? You feel all right, don't you? Oh, why, of course I feel fine. Well, more people stop me on the street to tell me how sorry they are you're feeling so bad, and they hope you'll be better soon. Well, I don't understand that. I don't understand it at all. I'll get the phone. Hello? Hello, is this to Mrs. Bailey? Yes. This is Mr. Rossi, the Bailey. Oh, yes, Mr. Rossi. Are the cakes for tonight ready yet? What's that? What's the matter with you, Mrs. Bailey? I beg your pardon? <laughs> Less than one hour ago, your husband come by to tell me to cancel the order. You're too sick for the party tonight. What? I say, less than one hour ago, your husband... I, I heard what you said, Mr. Rossi. Why did you call? Well, I, I forget to tell your husband. I think you should pay for the cakes anyhow. I make them especially for you. I'm not going to sell them to anyone else today, and by tomorrow they'll be stale. Well, will you hold the line a minute? I want to talk to my husband about this. He's in his study. Oh, sure. Two seconds. 
trip to the party tonight. Why is Philip saying such things? Why is he? Yes, what is it? I must see you right away, Philip. I'm coming in. Elizabeth, I've asked you many times not to come into my study. But I want to, I want to ask... By my being too presumptuous and wanting a place where I can read and think in privacy. Philip, I didn't mean to disturb you, but Mr. Rossi... Who? The baker who was supposed to have prepared our cakes for oh. night. He called saying you canceled the order because I wasn't well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I told him not to bother you. I'm, I'm tired of all these parties. I want time to read and be alone, Elizabeth. I couldn't tell him that was the reason for the cancellation, so... Well, I said you were ill. I meant to explain. It slipped my mind. Is that so terrible? No. No, I suppose not. Why else would I have told the baker that, Elizabeth? No, Anne, I'm not really sick. Who told you I was? <laughs> Mr. Rossi, well, I'm perfectly all right. Just a little tired, maybe. But, Francis, I'm all right, really, I am. I know, I know what Anne said, but it's just my nerves, that's all. No, Francis is wrong. I'm not ill. I'm just tired, that's all, Grace. Well, I may not sound too well, but I assure you, I assure you, I am all right. Yes, I'll take it easy. Yes, I promise, I promise. What is that husband of yours trying to do, Elizabeth? Why, what do you mean, Flora? You know what he told me this morning? What? He told me to throw your sleeping pills in the furnace. But they never were mine. He bought them for himself. I've just been taking them for the last few nights because all this talk about my health has made me so upset. Yes, I know that. But do you know why he wanted me to throw away the pills? Why? Because, according to him, he was afraid you were thinking of committing suicide. All right, Flora, that'll be enough from you. You can pack up your clothes, Flora. Get out of this house. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, I'm not getting out of this house, my mighty, high and mighty... Well, you'll Mr. do as I say. Flora, go into the kitchen, please. <sighs> I want to talk to Mr. Bailey. She's leaving this house, Elizabeth. I'll not let him leave. Please, Flora, please do as I say. Go into the kitchen. The day when he came to this house, that's all I can say. She'll have to leave, darling. I won't allow her to upset you. She's way. not upsetting me, Philip. I'm perfectly all right. Well, of course you are, but you should rest more. You shouldn't allow yourself to become so excited. So darling. much has happened that I can't understand. Why, everyone in town seems to think that I'm practically... Practically on the verge of, of suicide. Elizabeth, what are you saying? You mustn't even think. It's so true. Shameful. It's that woman who upset you with her lies. She's got to leave this house, Elizabeth. Flora lived in this house even before I did, Philip. I can't tell her to leave. And my wishes mean nothing? Oh, it's not that. I know the mind and how it works. I know it far better than your doctors. I know you're in peril, that you need rest and quiet. And I won't allow this fishwife to fill your brain with poison. You must make a go, Elizabeth. No. I see. You imagine that she is your wall against all evil. Is that it, Elizabeth? Perhaps she is, Philip. Well, I think you need a lesson. I spent the rest of the day in my room. I, I was so confused, I didn't know where to turn. What had happened to me, to Philip, to our marriage, what was going on? Come in. Oh, Flora. I meant to come down and see you. I'm sorry about what happened this afternoon. Philip didn't mean half of what he said. Flora, what's wrong? You look so strange. Flora, answer me. What's wrong? Flora, talk to me. Flora, what are you going to do? slapped me. Have you gone crazy? Flora, come back here. Flora, why did you do this to me? Speak to me. Why did you do this to me? Flora! Flora! I was stunned. I, I couldn't believe what had happened, but I could still feel the sting of her hand. Why had she done this to me? After a while, I found enough courage to go looking for her. She was in the kitchen preparing supper as though nothing had happened. She looked up when I entered. Hello, Elizabeth. You look tired, dear. 
Flora, why did you do it? You mean, tell that husband of yours what I thought of him? I just That's had to... That's not what I mean. Why did you come to my room and... Come to your room? What are you, what are you talking about? I've been down in this kitchen all afternoon preparing supper. You're lying, Flora. Now, why should I lie? Honey, what's wrong with you? The only time I left this kitchen was when Mr. Bailey called me into the library to apologize for the way he talked. I took his apology with a grain of salt, I can tell you. Then you weren't in to see me this afternoon? No. Flora, telephone Dr. Davis. Tell him I must see him right away. Then I want you to go over to your sister's house. Stay there till I call you. Flora came into your room. How did she look, Elizabeth? Well, I didn't realize it at the time, Dr. Davis, but she walked as though in her sleep. And she told you that she was with your husband before this happened? Yes. Yeah. Then under the circumstances, I'd say Flora was walking in her sleep, a hypnotic sleep. Hypnotic sleep? I never mentioned this to you, Elizabeth, but when I first met your husband, I discovered he was a firm believer in hypnosis. But... But... What has Philip to gain by doing that to Flora? Oh, I imagine you goaded him into his, his little display of hypnotic power. The real question is, what would he gain by doing that same thing to you? Nothing at all. He couldn't touch my money, if that's what you mean. Mm -hmm. Why, he'd just about have to talk me into killing myself. Doctor. Yes? This morning, he told Flora he was afraid I was going to commit suicide. He started talking to him that I'm moody and nervous, and he... Pardon me. Yes, nurse, what is it? Mr. Bailey is in the waiting room. Oh, no, doctor. What does he want? Oh, he just wants to know when Mrs. Bailey will be ready to go home. He stopped by to pick her up. Doctor? Send Mr. Bailey in. Yes, sir. I don't want to see him. I never want to see him again. Elizabeth, what's happened, darling? Your wife felt ill, so she came to see me, Mr. Bailey. What in the world is wrong with Let's not waste time. There's a train leaving here for the east at 6 o'clock. That's just 30 minutes from now. You'd better buy a ticket for that train. Elizabeth, what's he talking about? I don't understand. I'll help you to understand. Your wife is afraid that you're trying to make her commit suicide. Uh -huh. If everything else fails, you'll use your knowledge of hypnosis to accomplish her death, just as you used it on floor this afternoon. Now, maybe I don't have enough evidence to accuse you of trying to kill her, but if you're not on that 6 o'clock train, I'll talk to the district attorney. Do you believe this, Elizabeth? Yes. Do you want me to leave? Yes. All right. I'll go. I'll wire you later. You can send my things on to me. Goodbye, Elizabeth. Later, I drove with Dr. Davis to the railway station. And from the parked car, I watched Philip emerge from the station carrying a suitcase and board the waiting train. I waited until the train was gone, and then I telephoned Flora. Well, Flora, he's gone. He's gone for good. Good riddance to bad rubbish, I say. I'll go right over to the house. No, Flora. Hmm? No, you stay with your sister tonight. I'd... I'd rather be alone just for tonight. Well, maybe that's a good idea. My sister and I were planning to go to the movies. Well... You'll call me in the morning, won't you? Yes, Flora. I'll call you. Afterwards, I had a good dinner. Went to a picture show. It was during the show that I started getting the strangest feeling. Almost a premonition. I, I couldn't understand it. I thought perhaps it was just the darkness of the theater and the natural reaction of everything that had happened today. I left the theater and wandered around the streets trying to find a reason for not going home. What was wrong with me? What was I afraid of? And then for no reason that I can explain, I called the railroad station. Hello? I'd like to inquire about the 6 p.m. train, please. Do you mean for tomorrow night? No, no, the one that left tonight. Yes, what about it? Well, there hasn't been any trouble with it, has there? Trouble? What kind of trouble? I mean, it wasn't delayed any place along the line or anything like that. Of course not. That train's 400 miles from here by now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now that was a silly thing to do. And then I did something even more silly. I dialed my own number. 
What was wrong with me? Who did I expect to answer the phone in that empty house? After a while, I hung up. Then I went outside and took a cab home. I just couldn't sleep. I sat up in bed and turned on the lamp. The clock said 1.35. Perhaps a glass of warm milk would help me relax. I started for the kitchen to prepare it. When I passed Philip's study, I saw the door was half open. Oh, it gave me a start. I hurried over and turned on the light. Study was empty, of course. But all his books were still there. Then I went to the kitchen. I prepared the warm milk and I took it back to my room with me. But the milk didn't help at all. I couldn't sleep. I thought of calling Flora, but I couldn't disturb her at this time of night. And then a tiny feeling started growing in me. As faint as the ticking of a watch. I wanted to go back to Philip's study. The feeling grew, gnawing at me. I wanted to go back to Philip's study. Finally, I couldn't stand it any longer. I got up from my bed and put on my robe and started down the hall. I opened his door again and snapped on the light. I told myself the reason I had come here was to decide what I'd do with this room. I'd destroy every evidence he'd ever lived here. I'd, I'd throw out the bookcases and paper the walls and, and, and change the curtains. I went over to his desk. In the top drawer, I found a packet of papers. Letters from Martha, his first wife. Their marriage license. Here was her death certificate. Martha Ellen Bailey. Died August 23rd, 1944. Age 25. Cause of death... Suicide. But he told me she died of pneumonia. No. Martha killed Philip. herself, Elizabeth. Yes, yeah, she killed herself, poor dear. And she was so young. I, I... I saw you get on that train. The train makes so many stops, Elizabeth. What are you going to do? Nothing. Not a thing. But I rather imagine your Dr. Davis will be sorry when he finds out that in spite of my going, you killed yourself. No, Philip. But then again, perhaps he'll think you killed yourself because of my going. Out of love, my darling. Why are you doing this? Uh, there are many reasons. The one that you would understand concerns your money, of course. And the fact that it becomes all mine upon your death. I'm not getting out of here. No. Elizabeth, wait. You're hurting. No, you'll not run Let away. Me go, please. You'll not run please, away. Philip, please. Look at me, Elizabeth. No. Look at me. No. You'll not Philip. run away. Philip, don't. You'll not run oh. away, Elizabeth. You'll stay oh. here because you want to stay. No. You want to stay, yes. Elizabeth. You don't, don't want to run away. You want to stay no. with me. You want to stay with me, Elizabeth. Mm. You want to stay with me. You see, I let you go. You could run away if you wanted to, but you no longer desire to run away. You want to stay with me. I... You want to stay I... with me. Isn't that right, Elizabeth? Yes. I want to stay with you. Yes, of course you do. You love me very much. You believe in me. Isn't that right, Elizabeth? I... Believe in you, Philip. Uh, Elizabeth, this afternoon you told me to go away, that you no longer loved me. Now, kiss me, Elizabeth. Uh, you see, there are no magic words, no secret formula, merely my mind imposing its will upon yours. 
Elizabeth, in the bottom drawer of my desk, you'll find a gun. Get that gun. That's right. Now come back here to me and give me that gun. You do these things because my mind is stronger than yours, Elizabeth. You would stand here and you would let me kill you if I wanted to. Wouldn't you, Elizabeth? I would stand here and let you kill me. But I do not want to kill you. You take the gun, Elizabeth. That's right. You take the gun. They'll find your finger stiffened around the trigger. And I'll return to the town I left. And in the morning, someone will call me and tell me you killed yourself because I left you. And I will be very unhappy. Take the gun and turn the barrel to your heart, Elizabeth. That gun. Turn it to your heart. Not to me. Elizabeth! Shut, shut, shut. Elizabeth. Someone heard the shots and found me standing over Philip's body. I explained that Philip had hypnotized me. And there was no trouble at all, not even a trial, because no one is responsible for their actions in a hypnotic state. And since then, everyone has been so nice to me. Dr. Davis, Flora, my friends. Everyone's been so helpful and understanding, and I'm very grateful. But still, I find it so hard to sleep, because always I wonder, does everybody truly believe that when I killed Philip, I was actually hypnotized? Yes, Elizabeth has trouble sleeping, and when she finally falls asleep, her dreams are far worse than any insomnia. Because no matter how many times she tells herself that Philip deserved to die, she still remains a victim of her own guilt. Maybe we've found our moral, that deep within each of us is a pathetic longing to do only good in this fleeting life, and that no matter how we may ridicule this longing, no matter how we may rebel against it, no matter how it annoys us in this sophisticated world, the goodness remains to torture us when we do evil and to always remind us that we are more than we seem to be, that perhaps we might even be the children of God. And if that thought embarrasses you, well, I rather imagine there are times when it also embarrasses him. Good night, folks. See you next week. Listen next week for another dark venture with John Newland. Featured in tonight's story was John Banks as Elizabeth and Hans Conrad as Philip. The others in the cast were Janet Scott, Bonnie Phillips, Jack Petruzzi.